Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in August. <laughs> In total, I read 15 books in the month of August, and most of them were for the Summer Fling readathon that I was a co host for. I'm going to be leaving all of the information down below for that readathon in my TBR video if you want to see if I completed my whole TBR or not. Uh, so I'm going to be looking off to the side for a lot of this for um, looking at my ratings and all that stuff. Um, so if I'm looking that way, that's what that is. So I'm going to be going from my least favorite to my favorite book as usual. My least favorite book that I read in the month of August was unfortunately my first Harlequin read and that was for the prompt of read a Harlequin book for the Summer Fling Readathon. That is After Hours Seduction by Janice Maynard. I have a reading vlog where I read this book. Um, I'm gonna link it down below where I have more of my um, kind of like in-depth in real time thoughts of me reading this book. So basically this is about a woman who works in this company. The bosses of this company are three brothers and she works for one of them. But then one day at work she meets another brother who works for a different part of the company and they end up having a secret hookup relationship out of all of this and she cuts it off with him because she wants more but she knows that he doesn't and she doesn't want to get her heart broken so she cuts it off with him and no one knows about this relationship at all between them but then this brother is like a world champion or olympic skier and he gets in an accident he's been recovering for a couple of months i believe the brothers really want to help him get back into work and start working again and so this man is staying at a remote cabin somewhere i don't remember where but his brothers ask our heroine to go help him get back into work and start back work back up again in this cabin alone with him and they don't know that they used to be together um they just think that he needs somebody to help him so they ask their assistant to go and help him this which is overall really bad for me. I don't even remember why it was bad. You can go check out that video. I didn't like it at all. It was very promising at the beginning. It was very promising. And then it just went downhill. I don't even remember why, because it's been so long since I've read this. But again, if you wanna know why I didn't like it, go check out that video because I honestly don't remember right now. Next, we're gonna talk about Riker by Jerry Glenn. I got this one off of my Kindle. I think I had it as a freebie. That I downloaded for free a little bit ago. This one I gave 2.5 stars and this was for the prompt for Dark and Dangerous from the Summer Fling Readathon and this is Dark and Dangerous because it's a dark cover but also um, this book is about a woman who is on the run from an evil motorcycle club so that's pretty dangerous. Our main character Charlotte works in a home or a hospital where people who know that they're about to pass away can stay there and be as comfortable as they can be until they pass. One of her recent patients is this old man who just so happens to have cancer unfortunately and um, he's a part of a motorcycle club. His son figure named Riker always comes in to stay with him and be with him until his time unfortunately comes. And there he meets Charlotte but little does he know that Charlotte has a horrible past when it comes to motorcycle clubs and she is very frightened of him and everybody in his club. Charlotte has this sister who has gone deep into the evil motorcycle club in their past. She went back to them and now it's catching up with them and um, people are out to get her and are trying to kidnap her and do horrible things to her. Trigger warning for attempted sexual assault. This uh wasn't really for me. <laughs> uh, I'm an outlier here when it comes to this but I don't like the word babe. I can't stand the word babe or baby. Not not my term of endearment at all. So this book was filled with that and if it's filled with those words I will never ever ever give that book a five star ever. Just never ever. I can't stand it. I can't stand that word. It's just me. It leaves like a horrible taste in my mouth. I don't know why I cringe every single time I read it. But that wasn't the main thing that I didn't like about this book. It just jumped in too much with the love and the insta love and it was just, it was too much and it just didn't sit well with me. There was also just a lot of talk about sexual assault and um, people doing that stuff and buying people. If you're into more dark romance, this might be for you, but it honestly, I didn't mesh well with the writing. The writing was not for me at all and the insta love was not for me so this book in general was not for me unfortunately next i read tangled up in christmas by lisa renee jones this was the prompt for down home country um because this takes place on a ranch and it also takes place in texas which is where i'm from i honestly think i might even lower my rating to a two instead of a 2.5 because 
I literally remember zero zilch nothing about this book. So <laughs> let's look at the summary. I remember I got this one off of Audible Escape and this is the second book in the Texas Heat series and I read The Truth About Cowboys for the um, Christmas and Julyathon and I really enjoyed it. Not this one. This one was so boring to me I think. I think that's why I didn't like it so much. I think it's second chance romance if I'm not mistaken. Our heroine is a photographer or a party planner and our hero is like a YouTube sensation where he takes care of animals and he's a vet and they used to be together a couple years ago and no one knew about it and they were even engaged and no one knew about it um, and there's also an age gap I think he always worked on her family ranch he was best friends with her brother I think I don't know I don't remember anything if a book is not memorable to me is not memorable to me. This one was not. I think I read it in the entire drive back to college when I moved back to college and I don't remember a thing about it. I don't recommend it. I think it was really boring, really boring. Nothing happened. Next I read Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas. This was for the prompt for historical or old school historical. This isn't necessarily an old school historical but it's just a historical <laughs> book. Um, this is the first book in the Ravenels series and I tried to read this for the first time about a year ago. It was a buddy read and I think we both <laughs> didn't finish it but I gave it a shot again and I actually pretty enjoyed it um, but a bunch of people have been telling me how this is their least favorite in the series and it just gets better from there and I can attest to that because I've read two more in this series which I'm going to be talking about later in this video. Um, I really enjoyed this one. This is a historical romance where our heroine is a widow and since she's a woman she's not allowed to inherit any of her husband's things and her husband died three days after their marriage and um, she is now tasked to help take care of all of his sisters. He has three sisters and they become their own little family but since a woman cannot inherit his things it goes to his cousin I believe that's his cousin um, named Devin he comes to the estate to take away the house and sell it and get rid of it he doesn't want to deal with this rich lavish life that he's been given now and he doesn't want to deal with all these women but when he goes there he can't help but be very intrigued by Kathleen who is our heroine it was really good I had a really hard time connecting with their love story and um, I feel like the book spent a little bit of too much time focusing on other love interests which I cared about way more than theirs if that makes sense. Um, I do think it was a great start to the series and I really like how it's set up for the other books but I feel like by doing that it also diminished their relationship if that makes sense but overall really enjoyed it and this cover is very beautiful. I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Neanderthal Marries Human by Penny Reed. I believe this is a number 1.5 in the Knitting in the City series and this was the prompt for takes place in a big city or big city life for the Summer Fling Readathon um, and this is just the story of Quinn and Janie getting married and their story they were first introduced in the first book. I really enjoyed the first one it was so much fun and this one wasn't all that much fun <laughs> compared to that one. I only gave this one three stars it was okay. I just felt Quinn so overbearing. I didn't feel like I loved them as much as I did in the first one and their whole issue with the wedding and everything and how the wedding should be just like got on my nerves like why can't you just do what you want to do and I like Janie and how quirky she is but her reasoning really got on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Overall it was just an okay book for me. Okay next is gonna be one that I'm kind of very disappointed about and that is Zenny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I only gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars when everyone else is giving it like five stars and I am not unfortunately. I don't know I didn't love this romance as much as Rafe's like at all in my opinion. I loved Zenny and her love interest so much but it was boring <laughs> like the story was boring like nothing happened. The summary of this book is there is our main character named Zenny and um her aunt just passed away and she was very very rich. She's giving most of her money to Zenny in her will um but the only way she can get that money is if she marries Mason who was her aunt's like friend in her town and he is 
an Irishman or a Scotsman, I believe, and uh, the only way they can get their money, because he is getting some money from her as well in the will, and the only way they can get money is if they get married. And that is how the story sets up. I really liked our characters. I liked how open they were about talking about their feelings and their sexuality, and I really enjoyed those topics, but it was boring. Like, they did nothing. Like, other than the steamy times, that was very well written, and um, like the will, scenes like nothing else happened i couldn't tell you what happened like at all like the story wasn't interesting to me unfortunately but i'd loved these characters but i just always felt my mind wandering while i was reading this book because i didn't really care about some of it like at all because it was boring at points whereas like in rafe which is the first book in the loose ends series you have those kids and like it was just so much fun and this one it was fun but it was also just kind of boring. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that a bunch of people absolutely adore this book and it was really fun to read, but it is not my favorite at all, unfortunately. Next, I have Damaged Goods by Talia Hibbert. I gave this one four stars and it is a novella, a part of the Ravenswood series, number 1.5. Our first book in this series is about Ruth and her love interest. And Ruth went through a lot of things before she met our hero in the first book. One of those things was being cheated on and verbally abused by an ex-boyfriend. He cheats on her with the heroine from this book. This novella is basically a story talking about how that woman is trying to escape that horrible man because that man sucks like it's, he sucks so this is kind of like her story coming into herself and finally standing up for herself against her husband so this is a novella about laura she decides to leave her husband and by doing that she goes and travels to a beach town that she used to go to as a teenager and when she goes there her first night she sees samir who was her first like everything when she was 15. So they reconnect and everything, but um, little does he know that she is still married and she's, she's filed for divorce and that she is also pregnant with her ex-husband's child. <laughs> so it's inner workings of that. I really, really enjoyed this novella. I absolutely adore this series. I finally completed this series with this book. And also I really liked how we got to see Laura come into herself and learn how to stand up for herself, learn to love this baby before it even comes and know that it is her baby. It was really, really, really great. I really recommend this series. It is overall a great, great, great series. Next, I'm going to be talking about Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was our lovely ladies love show pick for the month of August or it was July. <laughs> I don't know, um, but I read it in August and our live show will be linked down below. We've already talked about this one. And this is the next book in the Brown Sisters series. We read Get a Life, Chloe Brown at the beginning of the year in January. That was our January pick. And so we really wanted to read the sequel for our book club. I really enjoyed this one. It was really, really, really fun. This is about Danny and Zaf. And Zaf has really, really, really bad anxiety and he's a bodyguard or a security guard. There you go, security guard for the building at the university that Danny works in. She is a professor. She is also a witch and is bisexual. They can't help but be really attracted to one another when they meet and they always flirt when they're in the office together. And then one day, um, Zafir ends up like carrying Danny out like this bridal style out of the building because he rescued her from an elevator during a um, like fire drill thing where the elevator got stuck. People are videotaping it and people post it on the internet and it goes viral and so they're kind of viewed in the public eye in a sense because of this and um, Zafir actually owns his own nonprofit organization uh, for kids. He asks Danny to fake date him so that he can get more promotion for his nonprofit. And Danny is not for relationships, she doesn't get in relationships, but she's really attracted to Zap, so she's trying to kind of like seduce him or convince him to be with her. <laughs> this was really, really, really fun. Ashley, Jen, and I really had a fun time talking about it. You can watch that video down below. Um, it was really, really, really fun. I really liked this, but I'm in the minority when it comes to which book I prefer in this series. I love the first one way more in my opinion. I really connected to Chloe and Red and their love story together. Um, I really liked Danny and Zap, but I didn't connect to them as much as Chloe. Again, I really enjoy this one, but I like Chloe more. <laughs> Next, I'm going to be talking about The Beast by Katie Robert. This is the fourth book in the Wicked Villains series. These are all fairy tale reimaginings, very steamy <laughs> fairy tale reimaginings, and this one is reimagining if 
Gaston, Beast, and Belle, all three got together. And it is very steamy. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's not my favorite in the series. I'm giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars because it's not my favorite in the series. But basically, Belle, her dad passed away, and Gaten and Beast uh, used to work for her father as like bodyguards. Someone's trying to overtake their city or area that they control um and so she really needs Gaten and Beast to come back and work for them um and the reason why they left is because of her because she couldn't choose between the two they make a deal to all three be together <laughs> um, it was really really steamy it was really fun to read I am adoring this series I really recommend the series and I really liked it I have six books left to talk about all of them are five stars let's talk about the next two books in the Ravenel series that I read we have the second book which is Marrying Winterborn and the third book which is Devil in Spring I loved both of these so so much the female leads in these books are fan freaking tastic I love them this one is kind of like an arranged marriage innocent heroine trope I don't remember where he's from but he's not from England um, and he owns like the biggest department store in the world it's their romance and I really liked it I connected to Helen like so 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 much and this one was really fun it's about Pandora she gets in a very compromising position with a guy at a ball and they end up having to maybe get married but she doesn't ever want to get married she just wants to make board games for the rest of her life and live alone i love their romance so much again so i absolutely adore these two and these are some of my new favorite historical romances of all time then i read scarlet by marissa meyer this is a reread for me i buddy read this with my lovely friend deja over at deja sore i'm linking her down below and we're rereading the lunar chronicles together this is the second book all about scarlet and I love this. If you didn't know, this is a YA dystopian series all about fairy tale reimaginings. This is a reimagining of Little Red Riding Hood. It's like a dystopian sci-fi series. I love this book way more than I did the first time around because this is my this was my least favorite in the series, um, but I like this one even more than the first one. And I love this couple like a lot, and um, I have a new appreciation for them after rereading this book. And I can't wait to continue on with this series um, because the next book is my favorite book in the series. Then I have If You Come softly by Jacqueline Woodson. This was for um, the Summer Fling Readathon for Author of Color. I also just forgot, I forgot to put the category for some of the books I just talked about in the Summer Fling Readathon. If you want to know what some of those books filled the prompts for, just go watch my TBR video. It's going to be linked down below. <laughs> um, but I replaced this book in my Summer Fling Readathon because the other book had a shooting scene in it, which is not my thing is the one thing I can't read about in books. This one was really good. It's very short. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling and um, it's a romance between a Jewish girl and a black boy. It was beautiful. I cried my eyes out. I feel like this is a book that everybody needs to read. It is so good. It's the audiobook is also like fantastic. Please, please, please read this book. It is so good. Then I read Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. This is the new Twilight book all in the perspective of Edward. So it's Twilight all in the perspective of Edward, the first book. And we have been waiting for this book for so long, so long. In all honesty though, when we were like told that this book was gonna come out, I was somewhat disappointed because the countdown I feel like could have been for this book or the next host book. I wanted the next host book more than this, but <laughs> I'm still grateful that I got this. I ended up giving this book five stars. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the story. I loved getting into Edward's head. I'm a big Twi hard. Like I'm a huge, huge, huge Twi hard. That does not mean that I support the way that Stephanie Meyer treated and wrote about people in the indigenous community in any way, shape or form at all. Do not support that whatsoever. I loved reading about Edward and his perspective about everything. I loved it a lot. And then the narrator for this was amazing because he plays Ian in the host movie and I love him so much. Fun fact about this book, my best friend Katie, um, she loves Twilight too and we wanted to read this together. I owned the physical copy, she did not, she had an ebook, but we wanted to read it like together and so we met up at like 7 30 one night at her house and sat in her bed. We downloaded the audiobook and we read it. I read it as a physical copy, she read it on her phone, and we both listened to it at the same time. We read the majority of this book together, but then I had to go home and then she finished it like later that day and I didn't. <laughs> I 
loved this. It was a very fun read for me and I feel like this is a book that like really contributes to the series because we got more into Edward's head and I loved that. <laughs> the last book that I'm going to be talking about today is my favorite book <laughs> of the month. And that is The Madness of Laureen McKenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This filled the prompt for Disability Rep for the Summer Fling Readathon because our main character, Hero, has autism. So this is a historical romance and it's about Laureen McKenzie. He is deemed as mad because of the way that he acts and the way that he speaks, but back in that day they didn't know what autism was so they couldn't tell if he had autism um, or diagnose him with that and so they just thought he was a crazy person and his dad ended up putting him in basically an insane asylum um, because of this. His brother lets him out when his dad dies and it's years later he comes in contact with this man who like they, they're like acquaintances and this acquaintance tells him that he's marrying this woman. Ian goes to find this woman because he needs to tell her that this man she's about to marry is a douche canoe and is gonna cheat on her. He has a whole separate house where he keeps women just to be with them. So he goes and finds her and tells her all of this. And But when he finds her and sees her, he wants her for himself. She's very baffled by this. She's first of all shocked that her soon husband would do this to her. But then she ends up starting up a little something something with Ian and it is so good. I love how patient and kind she is to him and how she doesn't judge him and how she gives him the benefit of the doubt and loves him and he loves her and learns to love her and learns to understand what love really is. I love this. I get why people love this. I love this. I want to go reread it right now. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are the 15 books that I read in the month of August. Please let me know down below if you read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! <laughs>